Hello, welcome to another video. It has been a while. Um, it's going to be another editing video uh, because I've, I've not been out very much recently because I've been really busy with work, but also the cloud has been really bad. Um, and then also whenever I do have chance to get out and shoot, uh, this geezer called Gav just keeps turning up in the back of the vlogs and ruining them. But anyway, I'll drop uh, I'll drop Gav's Insta down below. Um, go and check him out, he needs all the help he can get. But also, speaking of Gav, Gav has been introducing me into the world of vintage lenses and um, you would be amazed how good these lenses are for how little money. Now, what we're gonna be doing in this video is editing a picture of Orion uh, and I'm gonna show you what I found to be the easiest way of editing deep space now. Um, you might watch other videos, you might uh, and see much better ways of doing it, but from all of my short experience with deep space objects, this I've found for me personally to be the most easiest. So I'm gonna take you through that. I'm sure it'll evolve, like if I come back again in a few months, um, I'm sure I'll have learned a few more things. Uh, but yeah, we're gonna be shooting the Orion Nebula. I am gonna put a link to the TIFF for the stacked file. It's about an hour and a half, maybe an hour and 40 worth of um, uh, exposure. I've been shooting on my Star Tracker, a minute 30, however many shots that is. But then, yeah, back to talking about Gav. It's Gav that introduced me to vintage lenses. And this, the picture you'll see is shot on this weapon here. And this is, it was 20 quid from Facebook Marketplace. And this is the Prinz Galaxy 400 mil F 6.3. Yeah, and anyway, look at the size of this thing. But um, 20 quid off eBay, and you wouldn't believe, well, you'll see how um, how sharp the, the photo comes out. But anyway, we're gonna do some editing. Um, I'm gonna take you through. I'll jump into um, screen record now, and we'll just get going. As I say, I shot this in my garden. I um, shot this with no filters or anything like that, and I, I don't really, know what I'm doing. I, I do need to do some more videos on my tracker and getting Astro modded on the camera and stuff like that. But, um, okay, so here we are. So this is the this is the stacked image. And yeah, I'm just gonna take you through what I think to be the easiest way of editing. I'm just gonna crop this in so that we get rid of the, uh, the artifacts around the side that are stacked. And you're literally gonna open the levels and just keep doing the levels over and over and over. Now there is also a, um, a paid plugin that I use here that is important, I think so. It's called um, Gradient Exterminator and I paid 45 quid for it. So I, I'm not saying that you should necessarily try that, but I am finding that in all of my deep space um, editing, I'm using this plugin. I find it really, really useful. I'll try and show you a way around it, not using it, but also it does have a free trial, 30 day free trial. So you could give it a go yourself and see what you think. Uh, right, so yeah, so I'm literally just gonna open levels, command and L, and all I'm gonna do over and over again is I'm gonna pull in the black point to where it meets this spike of data, and I'm gonna pull in mid to where it meets the spike of data. And you can see that is slightly stretching the image. So click OK on that. Um, this is the point where I would normally use the gradient exterminator. And you literally just open it, click OK. It will run. And then that's the image sorted. It does do an amazing job. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go back. Um, I'm going to show you what else you could try and do, which is back into levels. So command and L for Mac. And then over here, see where it says to set the gray point. We're just going to choose in the middle. And you can see it's done a sort of similar job. But not quite as good. It's not taken out the um, vignette around the corner, but it's done, a, I would say, a similar job. But I'm going to cancel that. I'm going to run the astral gradient and then I'm gonna crack on. Gradient exterminator, sorry, not astral gradient. Right, cool, so you can see what's done to the image. And then all I'm gonna do is just continue, keep going, keep going, keep going. So we're gonna bring that in, 
bring that in you will start to see the filth that is on my sensor and don't worry about it we'll saw it keep bringing it in keep bringing it in and you can see that it's starting to pull out a lot of detail around the nebula there I think we can probably get away with another one as you can see it's making an absolute mess of the corners but all we're gonna do is crop that out probably end up going cropping a little bit more than that in the end but we'll just crop that out there you can start to see the absolute fill from my center here I've cleaned it since but let's not worry about it okay so I reckon we could probably get away with one more and you can see all of the uh, oh actually there you can see it's starting to fall apart the image so that probably means that we've gone as far as we can with this so the more data the better is what I would say um, I've only got an hour and a half here if you could go hours and hours and hours that'd be fantastic but right so that's all we've done normally when you're using um, the curves which would be command and M if you pull up the curves you just blow out the core you then have to do uh, another layer and then use a mask layer and um, mask through the previous layers core so that you don't blow it out but if you just use the levels over and over and over again then you can see it's not blowing out which is great at this point you can see that it doesn't look the best but I'm just going to go into camera raw I just search search raw raw filter but otherwise let me just show you quickly that raw filter you would go into filter and camera raw filter once we've got that open what we're going to do is go into vignetting we're going to drag that in and then we're going to move that midpoint I don't want it to be really, really dark around the edges. You can also play with the roundness. You could also play with the feathering as well. See how it brings, brings that in. That will get rid of some of the issues and some of the crap that's on the sensor. What I would also do is we need to sort this green out is go to the uh, HSL adjustments, saturation, and we're just gonna pull the green, the aquas, and we're going to pull a little bit of blue out of the image. I don't want, there is some blue around the uh, nebulosity of the of Orion there. So I don't want to lose all of the blue. What you could do at this point is if, you, if that wasn't enough, you could just click OK. And you can see the difference there. Right, uh, and you can just go back in. Uh, so I go to help search raw camera raw again that's how i do it um you could go back in you could then pull out the green the blue or have you again what i also would like to do is go into the hue on this one change the blue so we turn a little bit towards the uh, the aqua side um, the magenta a little bit over towards the red so we get some nice pink in the middle here and then the purples, if we just move them towards the blue. Must be a bit of blue around the running man there. Okay, so yeah, at this point you could also add other um, sliders like a little bit of clarity, a little bit of dehaze, a little bit of contrast. And that's looking pretty good to me. That's looking pretty good. So I'll click OK. So at this point would be the point where you would um, get rid of the, um, the the mess on the sensor there, and it's just over to the spot healing, and you just literally get a right size brush, which I've I've changed with the bracket keys, and you just click over, and that's how you get rid of it. Something else I would uh, I usually like to do is select color range, sample colors. And then you can just click into the part of the image that you want to increase or decrease or whatever, the part of the image that you want to work on. Click on there, you can see it, the selection there. You can change the fuzziness to how much you want to include. You click OK. And then you can either go into the curves, pull it up, and you see that part of the image is, is brighter. Or 
you can go to human saturation and go to lightness on here and increase the lightness slightly or decrease it slightly if you want to make it pop out more and then you can also increase the saturation Right, so I'm just going to go into the raw filter. I'm going to put a little bit of, a little bit more vignetting on there. Click OK, and then I'm just going to get rid of all the mank that's on the sensor. Just literally spot healing and click. At this point, I would call it basically done. You can go, you can go on as, as long as you like. You can mess with the um, the filters, camera raw filter. You can mess with the sliders as much as you would like. A little bit more contrast, maybe. Maybe pull the highlights down in the core. I don't like that. It's too far. But increase the the whites to offset it. Maybe you prefer um, you like a little bit of noise reduction in there. Maybe you don't like those colors and you want to play with the hue or maybe the saturation of them. But really, we're about there, to be honest. And yeah, I'm quite happy with that picture. Now, if you wanted to um, very easily remove the stars, you could carry on with the spot heel brush and just around it does do an impressive job like it's way way better than um, Lightroom okay so that's it that's the that's the final edit I have tried this on uh, other deep space objects and I will put them up on screen now I've done it with Pleiades and I'm trying to think what else but this is what I found to be just the easiest way of doing it if you didn't do all the messing around afterwards if you just literally did the levels over and over and over again you end up with what I would say is a decent shot. So have a go. Um, if you do, post it and tag me, that'd be great. Uh, let me know if you've got any tips that you put down below of, um, of deep space editing, anything like that. And uh, yeah, I really appreciate it. Thank you very much for watching and I will hopefully see you again soon. Take care.